All righty. From the uh, Lake Murray Park in San Diego, California, I'm coming to you live from a car. Uh, I'm visiting family. I've got, we've been traveling all week. Uh, this is the uh, SpinCast Cycling Show. I'm your host, Brian Kellison, with Lisa Brees, Casey Shum, Brian White. The music sounds great in my hi-fi. JBL speakers in a 2000 Toyota Avalon, my brother let me borrow. Uh, so we're going to go with the flow. Uh, yeah, I grew up in this area. I played Little League on these fields right here where these kids are playing uh, Little League in, uh, just off the, uh, off the road here. Uh, Let's get into the show, right? Uh, I traveled a lot. I was uh, in New York City earlier in the week, so I haven't been on the bike very much, except for actually riding the bike in New York City around the, the Zwift Central Park. I did the actual Zwift National Championship, uh, the U.S. National Championship, uh, what is it? Uh, park, park, park. Uh, park Loop Reverse. I think that's what I did. I actually did that route. It was kind of cool. The final sprint or the final little kicker that goes over the banner is not as steep in real life as it is in Zwift. So if anyone gets a chance, they can do that. How are you guys doing? Doing fantastic. Doing pretty good. Wow. That, that was a very, very enthusiastic, like, hey. I like Brian. Wow, this is a great traveling show. all week. So um, yeah. I haven't got much writing of my own in, but... Uh, nope. have been trying to pick up since I got home on Friday. Yeah, this Brian is a White has a, gonna... has a big week, though. He, he's yeah. had a big week of writing. He's had a lot of stuff go on. I, Monday, yeah. Monday was a big day. Uh, I have officially become... I have left Casey alone on Sandbagger Island. I am yeah. now an A. I have officially done it. And I'm thrilled, man. Like A lot of people are like, oh, man, whatever. And uh, so when I, this was day before ZRL, like I didn't intend to do much effort and that just, you know, once you get to the final climb, I'm like, I'm going full gas, get everything I got, I upgraded. And Lee touched on this last week when I told my team, Hey guys, I'm sorry. I just upgraded to a, every single one of them were like, dude, that's awesome. They like, they were all about it. So like, that's how this situation should be handled. You know what I mean? Like I did work. I made it. Let's be happy. In some places, I've actually been on teams to where they rotate people so they don't upgrade. Now, that was pre-category enforcement, so where it was just race results, but still. But yeah, that's uh, I was pretty excited. And then Wednesday, I saw Megadeth in concert for the first time, me and my daughter. So that was an awesome night. And uh, Wait, can you, go back, can, can you go back to the, hey, I was upgraded? Yeah. How did they tell you you were upgraded? Okay, so I did, it was uh, whatever stage, I think it's a stage three right now for the Pinarello thing. And that last climb coming from the Bercasi area up to the finish in uh, Neokio, uh, that's where I did my effort. So it was like five minutes at 4.17. Uh, when I looked at the results right after that, there was no upgrade. I'm like, how the hell is that? Like, that's unbelievable. So about a half hour later, uh, Zwift.com updated, and that's where I saw I was A category on Zwift.com under my profile. Uh, and then I just refreshed Zwift Power, and it so you were looking there. for it, or they sent you a notification. No, I was straight looking for it. I would have probably found out like to, like the next day when I went to ride, but I was actually looking for it. You would have only known by it locking you out from up being able to race in a B race, yes, correct, right. So if you didn't know, you would have just showed up and be like, oh, well, I can't race in B. And so right. it doesn't yeah. really inform you. No, there is no true informing. It's uh, you finding out on your own. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, you, get a race, race, so you get a race a level <laughs> above me for 30 days and you get a race a level below me after the race score rolls up. So that's that's a topic we'll get into when we get to Zwift. Once we get into Zwift, we will. Uh, oh, BK, we love you, babe. But, All right, everybody, but, uh, stream, stream's over. Yeah, BK is done. gone. Later. Uh, <laughs> once we get into the Zwift stuff, I'll bring up race score. Uh, I I got some thoughts on it, and I'll see, I'm curious to see what Casey and anyone else in chat will uh, think about it. But. Uh, but Serious congrats. That's that's a oh, big undertaking you. in the last 10 months. Um, 
Yeah. yeah. So in kind of my progression from this year, uh, I was doing okay up until May. And then like I had a few weeks of vacation, I was in Dallas for a week. Then I was in St. Vincent for a week. And then I got some sort of Caribbean death AIDS that knocked me out for a few weeks. So literally from June, say fourth, fifth, when I started riding again till now, like the, my leg is working correctly. I, in being consistent, it's been phenomenal. And, and this is where I like, I'm not trying to stay in B. Like I was literally trying to do stuff to get out of B. Uh, and I just never, I was never able to. And now I finally have, and I, it's more of the VO2, I think. Like, uh, that's what it was. That's the more, the more immediate. Like, because I've been fluctuating in that area over the limit on ZFTP, but ZMAP nailed it for me. It's interesting, too, that ZMAP is what moved you up to A. You know, I pulled up your, your Z power stats just right before we got, went on air, and you were a little bit below you know, still looking at FTP, like there's guys that I'm racing in B that are, that are well over you on 20 minute numbers, things like that. Yes. But the, yeah. the Z map bumped you up, but yet I know you and I had the conversation earlier this week, you know, when it came to racing some of these bigger races that you felt like that was actually your weakness was, was yeah. the short, the, the, you know, the, the three, four minute hill climbs, that's where you were lacking on some of the big finishes for, for Sunday race club. Right. And it is, and as you can see, kind of in the background here, this is a very hilly, I shouldn't say very hilly. It's a very punchy course. There's like, one, obviously the one main climb and there's two steps to it. There's one wall and then a second wall. And it's a long, it's a longer wall. It's like two kilometers total length of little downhill in it. And then there's like three pretty severe walls in it. And the, it's not necessarily my overall power has increased with the VO2. It's my ability to match that repeatedly. That's yeah. my biggest improvement of repeatedly hitting for me about like five, 4.8 to 5.2 watts per kilogram for two, three minutes. I think that's a big thing with the Zwift racing in general is your recovery between effort, recovery between efforts and how many efforts you can actually do per race. You know, if you can hit 5.0 yeah. for a couple minutes, go up the hill, but then you recover from that and you can do it over and over and over again. I think that's what leads to a lot of success in Zwift racing. Yeah. And so like within the A category, like as of right now, like where I stand just getting into it, I'm going to try to find flatter races. Cause I know I can be competitive. You get anything longer with like even the hilly KOM, I think that would get destroyed, but we'll see. I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to find out and it'll make me better in the end. But cause we all know I was able to, with the mass start races, hang in with the A's, but now it's like any event that I do, I'm going to have to be on my toes. I can't kind of play. You know what I mean? I can't, I'm probably going to have to be like on my toes and hanging on more than actually Hey, I'm going to try this. If it don't work, I'll just come back to the group and try to do what I can. So now it's going to be more of, all right, these efforts will hurt me, but now I'm going to, have to do a little more sitting in the pack. So just for the next probably little while until I get more comfortable or more settled in, maybe lose another kilogram, I have to be more conservative with what I do in a race. But yeah, I'm not, I'm not sad at all. I'm actually pretty proud. So. A used to be like, well, it still is. If you get A in Zwift, that's like pro. Like <laughs> yeah, pro it's, division. Well, and it's it's even harder to get now with the new, you know, it it's it's moved up, you know, two or three tenths on the scale. Um, so it's harder to get now. So yeah. awesome. BK, you're back. We can't hear you. It looks good though. Yeah. Yeah, that cell phone camera is crispy. You know, BK is having an internal <laughs> stroke right now. He's losing his mind. Yeah, he's like, losing it. He looks. He's smiling, the... but deep down in his brain, he's like, son yeah. of a freaking bitch. He, he, he can hear us, and he's just having a good old time. <laughs> yeah, deep down inside, he's boiling. 
but he's trying to maintain this beautiful face for you the can visual just, audience. You can just mime the rest, like Scott BK with mic issues. That's a first. Yes, oh, man. it is. RGT sucks. <laughs> oh yes. But no, yeah. congratulations, Brian. That is an amazing feat to get to A. Like, yeah, I'm pretty you're up there it. with the elite of Zwift. I think we're getting him. He did something. We we got some uh, we got some white noise happening. Oh, but yeah. So and we'll just start with it. Um, let's see here. Let we'll kind of come back, circle back Ooh, to Swift. Can you hear me? I can hear not you. Yet. No, you can't hear me. Yeah, we can, oh. but it's like super delayed. No. It's yeah, it's a little rough. We'll start All with right. Ruby. All right, let me. Do I know Zavaris has been big into Ruby, uh, he, and, and I will admit, it's actually a pretty cool program, some of the updates they made. Uh, and BK picked this up. I did not watch any of the team time trials, or I'm sorry, the time trial championship today. BK picked this up, and uh, within <laughs> the Flow Bikes coverage, Ruby is a sponsor. I thought that was when, when BK said that. I don't know how you guys feel, but I thought it was pretty wild that Ruby is sponsoring the UCI Real World Championships while my Woosh is having the online World Championships. I think I think that's a very interesting situation to have two separate platforms, one hosting and being the forerunner for the World Championships with the UCI, and then the real world, you know, world championships in uh, Switzerland and Zurich is sponsored by uh, Ruby. So I thought that was kind of interesting. That's pretty cool because I didn't see that. But yeah, I am totally, I think Ruby is what I needed as far as a change to reinvigorate my outdoor or my indoor riding. You know, I just, when Zwift came out with those new routes, I jumped back on my trainer and I'm just like, man, it felt like a slog. It felt like I was forcing myself to actually ride my bike indoors. Yeah. And I was just, every single new route ends on that climb. And I'm like, man, I've done this climb nine times. And I still have like six more routes to complete where, you know, Ruby is the sort of, there's a bajillion routes. Like you're never riding the same one ever. It's an, and also helps you sort of explore the world. Like I didn't actually live stream, but I did record a little bit of what, you know, for the audience here, they can just kind of see what the video quality since the last time is way better than what it used to be. We can yeah. hear you. Can hear you guys. So I heard the okay. whole thing about the. Oh, you're game. back. You're back to crispy. Yeah, but this is. I got that, that thing. I'm charging in and doing audio. But I, I did want to touch on the the clarification. I think Ruby is sort of getting in on sponsoring flow bikes instead of trying to sponsor. Like it's like you're they're double selling it. Like there's in the actual thing selling it, which is Zwift. I don't even know if Zwift has the exclusivity on or my whoosh has the exclusivity on the actual real race so ruby is jumping in on the real racing coverage to kind of like promote their stuff like they did with the vuelta so you're well, seeing them as a banner ad on flow bikes so they may not yeah. necessarily be directly yeah. sponsoring the race but they're the they're yeah that's they're they're showing up on the the media coverage stuff okay on the flow bikes yeah the flow bikes coverage i don't know what it's like on the world feed or any of the other feeds or like, you know, like, like Eurosport, it might not be on that. So it's just a clarification. It's not, but it, it was, uh, it's unique. Yeah. Like Brian, Brian's making the point of, which is what I brought up is it's, it's yeah. like, Hey, they're, they're promoting where cyclists are viewing stuff. Yeah. I didn't know much of the background of Ruby. I knew Ruby was, was associated with Cyclops at one point. So I just went to their website and was, was looking at it and it said, it's a, it's the brainchild of two brothers. What is it? Peter and, and Yuri Samek. Mm. Uh, they're currently based in Prague. 
and employ over 100 people, according to their website. So Well, and Ruby has the advantage yeah. with real-life races because they have actual video footage. Uh, All the Vuelta, yeah. Yeah. like every time they came out with a new <clears throat> stage, the same day that there was a new Vuelta stage, there was three Ruby videos to correspond with that stage on the same route, which I think for a lot of people would be interesting. Yeah, that is something that I've said about Swift. I wish it would bring a women's stage, a section of it to the France every year. And that is something that like, I don't know, Aunt Bev or whoever, me, anyone be like, oh, hey, I can go ride this part of the stage as well, but that's pretty cool. So that is that is a very cool feature, and there, Zebri showed. I mean, it's it's very detailed. It's it's absolutely kind of mind blowing from what I thought it was. And, and like the custom custom um, customization with it is pretty cool. And Zebris can dig, dig dive more into it, but it's really neat how you can customize all the all the things to it. I'm hoping that they open up the. Uh, video or like the you could upload your own videos yeah. like for like rgt magic roads that's in beta and apparently is coming out sort of public beta in the very near future which i almost can't wait for that oh, that's <laughs> I'm gonna good. take i'm gonna take like a ton of videos <laughs> of, you know for people to well i recorded the, i recorded the ride through central park yeah you could upload that bk central park you know, Magic Roads ride. You could make a race of that. They'll put. You can import your own, yeah. you know, our augmented reality items, you know, into your route. Yeah, it's very cool. But yeah, I've 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 been enjoying right. it. Like I'm actually looking forward every day. The amount of challenges within Ruby is super impressive. Yeah, I yeah. joined every challenge I could and found out that I jo there was too many. You actually can't complete all the challenges in the month unless you ride 100 kilometers every single day. You have to pick and choose the ones that you actually want to, which is yeah. a, a joy compared to Zwift's three challenges for 10 years. We got the new one. <laughs> Maybe. We got the new one. Yeah, the new one. It's very similar to if people have been using Garmin Connect where Garmin Connect oh, yeah. every month has like the ride this many kilometers in September, walk this many steps in September. Ruby is very similar. Like they have those monthly, you know, challenges that get you XP, you know, and coins to spend on other bikes, which the bikes at this point, I have a solid week and a bit into Ruby and I'm nowhere near buying a, the Cervelo bike. Like nowhere near. Like the stuff there is expensive. You got like two, three months of riding to get a bike. I think that's good. It's totally good because it's something I'm like, man, I want. I went into the bike shop and I'm like, I need fifty thousand coins. I have like twelve thousand. I've been <laughs> doing challenges like crazy, and I'm like, man, I really want that Cervelo. But I'm like, that's gonna take me till end of November, which that's how I want it. I don't yeah. want these like here, everybody. Like with the last Zwift update where they're like, yeah, you know what? Everyone can ride everywhere. We're taking off the, you know, the level. Yeah, gates. that's right. So like, come on now. I wanted to, I wanted to bring this up in it, it's kind of segues into a, a question that I had that I was telling people at the beginning of the show. All right. Before we came on the air about uh, talking about Peloton and talking about uh, Zwift and the entry level for people to get on. So what's, what's like a more that might have a couple, couple of questions. One is, what is easier for you to kind of pitch to someone who doesn't ride and doesn't ride as much as we do, just trying to get fitness? And then what's the what's the selling point of self-achievements or other achievements versus actually riding with other people? So knowing you're riding with other people, right? And so that goes into the Zwift question, because I actually have uh, a perfect experience with Zwift. I was promoting Zwift today to my brother who doesn't ride all the time. Maybe he does a one mountain bike on an e-bike outside with his buddies, but he's trying to get fit. And I'm like, I just went to Zwift because it seemed the easiest and lowest hanging fruit for him to get into. Oh, I can ride. I see my person. 
Uh, he has, I, I got him an old kicker V4, so he just has something that he can put a mountain bike on, and he's riding. So what are those, like, what do you guys think of, what is the motivating uh, factor, like, routes or badges or, like, hey, I'm riding with somebody, and oh, then also, what was the other question? I can't remember the other question. I think, I've, I think I've changed my mind because I used to say I love Zwift because of knowing that there's other people on the course. But in Ruby, I don't want other people in the course. I don't care because I'm looking at the scenery. Like I'm riding through Jasper National okay. Park, looking at the trees. And I think the reason I liked people in Zwift was it gave me something to look at because I've done the same route 300 times. Okay. And so if you were, when I'm if riding you knew, if it was fresh eyes, what if it was fresh if, eyes? Could you, could you try fresh, to... Zwift would be awesome. Like coming in to Zwift brand new everyone loves it we, we've been there for 10 years though like I did the math what was it there's 400 and whatever 50 yeah. kilometers of roads in Zwift yeah. well I have 28,000 kilometers in Zwift I've ridden every road 85 times like that's too much but isn't you know, that part of the hey let's low let's lower the entry level for the new subscribers to give them the but, opportunity to go through the routes because well the level gate though the level gate was like level 12 or 20 you get right. that in like a week yeah <laughs> well yeah like like really but why, they could so have my question, all all the other routes right in the game but my question and they would is have been why like level Zwift, 20. why do we think zwift did that zwift just wants everyone to have everything all the time and they don't want to yeah. make things difficult for anybody yeah, I assume it was a. I assume it was a complaint about fairness. Probably. Yeah. It's not fair. Yeah, so then I can't who, get what, here. who are they listening to? Who's I don't. I, well, well and, and also, like, what was it? I I don't know. It's it's been so long since I've been prevented from riding a, a route. Yeah. Right. Okay. What was it a motivating factor or was it just a nuisance? Right. It's it's if it was there to earn something from a motivation uh, okay. perspective to keep people motivated. But if it was just a nuisance to people and like, why is this here? Um, then it, it makes sense to pull it. But um, none, none of the parts that were gated were that exciting to me, maybe the Alp, but the, it was what the, the jungle and that extension is what was gated. Yeah. Is that right? I think it was level six or 10. Well, I didn't think it was that high. I don't remember what it was locked at. Uh, yeah, there was no exciting worlds that were technically blocked where it was like, yeah. oh, man, we want this premium world blocked, you know, until you're level 15, like the Alp, let everyone ride the Alp. Okay, so then, then, then my question goes now with Peloton, right? So Peloton, yeah. <laughs> it, see, hypothetically, no, but hypothetically, they're going to have their own virtual world. Uh, and as have, Bucky says, can't wait to ride in the jungle said no one ever yeah right exactly. <laughs> right Dirt, all that stuff. yeah no one yeah. maybe brian maybe brian did because he wanted a jersey or something like that but i've done with, i've done some terrible jungle rides for jersey yeah but so i was in new york and i was at the i sent these guys photos because i stopped by i was near the peloton headquarters or whatever they do they have classes and they have a store and it's it's like next to the NHL building. It's in the heart of Manhattan. And it's like, wow, this is a lot of overhead for a company where you, you look at it and you're like, oh, they're, maybe they're struggling. Like their IP went big and then, or the IPO, excuse me. And now it's like, how, how, are, they, how are they sustaining? But they're in, innovating in a sense, not innovating in our world, but in their world to go, hey, we're going to create this virtual or they're, 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 at least that's what they talked about is there was like the beta sign up for the for the uh, vir virtual experience. But Peloton has a bunch of things. They have rowing, they have running, they have yoga, they have cycling as well. Six million and they have they claim six million subscribers. That might be a motivating factor for people that are like not Zwifty people or Zwifters. That might be a huge motivating factor and a big competitor in the future. Well, if Pelton comes out with their world that they've been talking about, maybe. Pelton is almost like system. 
well, it's system plus because you get all the live stuff. But like with system, you have like the workouts, the yoga, the mental. Yeah, you but know. you can do system without having their hardware. Like you don't need yes. Wahoo's hardware to do system. Where yeah, Peloton, it, I believe you have like, I don't know what's, what's Sydney, oh, your awesome. friend. Sid, yeah. yeah, Sydney's uh, our Peloton liaison, right? Yeah, so I've talked to Sydney about it. And to do the interactive stuff, you have to have the, whatever, the Peloton Plus bike, which is basically like our, our smart bike. It's, you know, it has the adjusted resistance, everything else. Um, now I can, I have her account login and they, and this is the other thing. are you admitting that live on the show? Well, Pel <laughs> Peloton, get this, Peloton don't give a shit. So the 6 million people, oh, yeah, they don't, oh, they, okay. the Go. 6 million people that pay for it, they can have five people under them. I think it's five. Sydney has oh, five on her oh, account. Oh, that's cool. So, oh, family so, plan. Yeah, that's yeah. very cool. So Sydney has me and two of her friends and like someone else. So she, she was like, yeah, I don't give a shit because one day or she changed her debit card, whatever it was payment missed and she didn't realize it. And then she went to uh, ride it at her house instead of going to the studio and she couldn't get on. So she messes one of her friends, Hey, did you change your password? And she's like, Oh yeah. Well, I didn't really want to say anything. Cause it, you know, you, the bill wasn't paid and they emailed the friends saying, hey, the account owner didn't pay the bill. So, oh, yeah, they, so this they isn't don't care. like this isn't like her giving you her user ID and password. This is actually like her I authorizing have separate, you as a user. Yeah, I have account. a separate account to where whatever I do is into my thing. And like, I don't know. Wow. Whatever. The other people, Sarah, Nathan, or whoever is on her thing, they have their own account they click on and go into. So, like, I've done the yoga stuff just uh, being on a board. I'm tired of watching my little Indian guy that I use. Uh, but to do anything interactive with it, you have to have the smart bike. So you can still do it, but it's just like basically the old school videos where you're before Zwift, where you're watching whatever and mimicking the effort. So, and I don't even know what Sydney pays for it but like it's to get into this next level what peloton seems to be doing yeah you're gonna have to get the higher whatever the, the higher equipment a higher tier they have control. a tiered subscription they have a higher tier yeah, yeah like so, add-on features right, like it, that's what i mean you would think that zwift would be like hey we know we're no we, we know we're doing running and they support yeah. running, but it's not an add-on thing. Because a lot of people say, oh, running's free on Zwift, and it's not free. Running is just a additional add-on to the existing, like, I can run for free, but I don't run. It's not, so, you have to have the paid subscription, from what I understand, right? No. You can run for no. free without the paid subscription. Yes, yeah, 100%. You can, you can have a trial oh, account, and you can run all you want, and the trial never expires. The trial only expires once you start logging bike kilometers. So you have to start oh. paying... But you can, your trial account, even if it's expired for the month, right? If you jump on and ride your whatever it is, so many kilometers, yeah. and you can't ride your bike anymore, you can still flip over to run and attach and oh, do okay. whatever you want. Yeah. Right. So, and I'll say one of the Strava trolls, not Strava trolls, Jesus Christ, Zwift trolls on the Facebook forums, he literally always is downgrading and being very derogative towards cyclists. This guy runs. And he doesn't cycle. So he's on Zwift being the elitist, and he doesn't even pay for the program. All he does is run, which really rubs me the wrong way. So that's my little rant. It's funny when you mention group <laughs> pricing, that's another oh, bonus of Ruby. But I, so I'm more I, curious I about Peloton. Like I've seen the, the sort of, it's slick. Like the, looking through the window, I didn't go into this to the shop, but like you're like, wow, that's pretty slick. It's like if they have classes, they have like a, a screen where they have all their classes. And I think you can go do live classes in New York, but the instructors are there. They have probably a, a, like a show, they have like a showroom floor, but like, I think you can go and do an in-person class. And it's a it's a, a approach that we don't see it from our perspective because it's so cyclist centric and not, yeah. and not gym experience centric. It's more a cycling experience centric and I, I like some of the po Peloton polish. I don't really want the, you know, the 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 class of like somebody getting out of the saddle and like, all right, spin and crank it and do all that. Like I've done those classes before and I'm not a fan of them, but I like sort of the underlying features that Peloton offers. 
it and you were bringing up the rowing and all that within zwift i just posted in chat and our show discussed it on discord there's a podcast that basically focuses on mayfield john mayfield steering rowing or all basically like original features it, i forget what year it was he built you know before it was even zwip before it was even like it was just his pet project steering was in the game so when we talk about innovation some of the stuff has been there 10 years and, yeah it longer than that it was still whenever he was on the slow twitch forums in 2011 mm -hmm. before it even happened and i i got, was kind of blown away with what he's saying and we've not got like rowing he has rowing built apparently and it's not happening as was my guess um steering was one of the first winter projects he put in once he built the game uh and, and then like so it's just kind of frustrating with that aspect and with the peloton they have why so is it many frustrating things. why is it frustrating to you it's, it's been 10 years because it's been so long that this has already been in the game like the workout mode the workout original workout mode was like a portal now we have a climb portal so kind of the same thing but that was back in somewhere i remember seeing a screenshot uh carissa min uh carrie star from the uh, twitch world has, has shared it and i don't know casey may remember it too but mm -hmm. i remember carissa was talking about it but are you so frustrated that the, are you frustrated that it exists and it's not seen the light of day for the public or are you frustrated that like I, I would see a frustration from like, hey, this has been development time, but it hasn't been introduced, and the cycling development is is got had hurdles, and it's not as polished as I think it should be. That's where I that's where I see my frustration. But I, I understand your perspective of like, hey, am I not? Or I don't know if that's your perspective, but it it's like, oh, yeah. it's in there. Why are we not getting it? Whether uh, I use it or not. That's kind of it. Like, because right now steering is such an issue, but steering has been in the game. But when it was called like JM, whatever the hell he called it, I forget the name of it. It was in the game, little buttons. He pressed on his keyboard, I think he said, but it's yeah. not available universal. So that's what I mean, that that aspect. So, and then the, the rowing, the running and all this, uh, these core features that we have have been part of the game forever. And there's been no advancement on them. Like when you See, look at the base game, it's very little has actually changed. Yes, yeah, some minor stuff has changed and improved, and they've made big leaps with racing and stuff like that. But when you look at the base features, that's what I mean. And like with Peloton, they they have several types of training. Our typical, oh, our, yeah, our typical what we train with your raw raw spin class stuff. You have the rowing, the running, and then just all the off the bike stuff. Yeah, Peloton's a different world, a different environment. So it is semi not comparing apples to apples, but just when you look at what the market is, you know, because you like basically we are narrowed down to runners or you know, cyclists. Yeah, but see, I, I look I, at this from a little ahead, different. Casey. Yeah, I look at this from a little different perspective. Being a developer by trade, you know, that's that's what I do in my day job. I look at this as like a it, this is a leadership problem they've had over time and it's a vision problem. You've got you've got somebody who who is a very good developer that's doing what he wants to do for fun, but it's not necessarily on the roadmap and it never gets polished enough to get released to the public, but it's all kind of got the framework behind the scenes and it's like, okay, at some point, a, a, as a leadership and as a vision of a company, they've got to say, we got to quit wasting time on the pet projects that are never going to see the light of the day and right. start focusing on delivering for our people. Some yeah. of those things finally bled through to real development, right? But other ones are still sitting on the back burner. How much time did they spend on those things? I think some of those things were before they thought Swift was really going to take off, but some of those things were after. And I think that was... I hope they're in a better spot now with some of the the changes they've made over the last few years. And I don't feel quite as disjointed as they were before. But I think that was some of the first like five, six, seven year struggle was 
they were playing a lot in the background to things that never saw the light of day because it was cool to do and that's what's fun to do as a developer but it wasn't necessarily targeting yeah. you know rollout to to the public and that they spent a lot of time on stuff like that um yeah, it, and, it's been, it, it, speaking of spending a lot of time on little things is the the uh swift ride konami code sort of like big <laughs> head thing which i don't think is, is like heavy lifting development but they spent time on these things which are little <laughs> throwaway marketing things but it takes a little bit of development time and so i understand exactly what you're saying casey with the sort of like yeah. it's diluting development time like proper development and you're like you're diluting these like hey we, we're trying you know we're spitballing we're throwing these things on the wall to see if they stick and then there's a point where you're like look some of these fun things start to take away from the actual work that needs to get done and so like the leadership thing I, i'm with you on big time is like yeah it's and like it, you we got it we got a direction that's where i don't that's where i'm not as disappointed than them not releasing the rowing or the other features that live there because i think it would have diluted what their core thing is is cycling the big head's a perfect example of that because i think i said it on my stream earlier in the week too it's like i think it's cool i've been having fun with it it's kind of it, it's kind of something different but then it was like when did they sit down in a board meeting or in a boardroom <laughs> and decide this was a, a, a good use of time to add value? Oh, I would have been versus... totally, totally into it if they didn't say anything about it. It wasn't yeah. printed on a sticker on the ride and it was just there. That would be more impressive than this little, it's like a marketing piece. It's like, oh, they yeah. put it on the thing. It's like Konami never printed that code ever. No. It was all word of mouth. Unless it was in some magazine that I didn't know about, like classified sort of information on Nintendo Power. With, like, but I don't think oh, any, it was always word of mouth when I was a kid. And this is like a little marketing throwaway. Yeah. They should have oh, never that's... let their normal media outlets put it out there, right? No. They yes. should have never, yeah, yeah, yeah. they should have no. never let GP Llama or Insider, anybody do a thing on it. They should have dropped it into, you know, a, a couple of streamers, Nathan Guerra, a couple other guys to just do it, right? Should, and then people would start band. questioning it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then people like just start questioning, but don't ever like, yeah, like this is yeah, how. Yeah. Well, because that was the reason, like back in the day, uh, with the, code, the real Konami code. You I, were, were, I can't you see. Were, I only have a three up on my four. Oh, oh, I see four. You, Got it. You were. He's just quiet. So the thing with the Ruby thing goes back things. to my Peloton. If 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 Ruby had, I know I know Lee said at the beginning, if he he doesn't want a lot of people, but if he did have a lot of people that were there would it be okay or would he be disappointed in ruby and less likely to use ruby what's one of the features you could do with ruby if there's a lot of people zevries you can't hear lee right bk well actually i was no, gonna I say with most people in Sorry. ruby it's actually the, i did a whole whack of routes on the weekend and there was 30 plus people on every single route but the a lot of people in ruby enjoy ruby because you can turn the people off yeah and ruby being like rgt it's not roots you're not going around and around in circles where you see people you start at the beginning of one route and you finish at the end of the route so what happens is if there's 50 people on a route you're either catching people or being caught like you're not riding a lot of the times with people unless you actually have a plan and say hey everybody you know let's join them up but what I was going to say before, when you brought up the Peloton uh, group, Ruby has group pricing. If you can get five people together, it's five fifty a month. Like that's insanely cheap. Like five fifty a month for five people. One yeah. person runs the account and pays for it, but you can you can send up to four other people the code to join that account. Well, and it looks like what it it's billed yearly, right? So like you can just one person pays for it, you Venmo your buddy, you know, a fifth of it. Like it's not like you're managing it monthly or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, you pay your yearly fee, five bucks, five fifty, done, which yeah. is a good deal. That's the thing with Zwift too, is they never released the Konami code you had to find some gaming cheat magazine from like the early nineties to find this code. They should have never have leaked it to anybody. Like yeah. this should have been a media blackout 
do not mention the Konami code because now it's out there and everyone's using it. The whole point of those fun little things was, yeah. hey, buddy, did you I see agree. this? Uh, yeah, it should have been a. It should have been one of those things where it's like you 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 put the nugget out there to a few guys and be like, okay, you can't put this, you can't mention how to do it on a stream, whatever. Like anyone you give this to, it has to be a private message, that kind of thing, right? Like you, you gotta you gotta figure that out. So yeah. Well, and then at the same time, like we're talking about, is it the Konami code? They, I can't hear Lee for some yeah, reason. Yeah, yeah. They they okay. they developed right. this code. If they had just come out with a brand new world with hundreds of kilometers of new road, <laughs> I'd been like, whoa, this is cool because it is cool. It is cool to use that code and get like a bunch of big heads. But I, I sit there and go, there's so much more they could have done because I, than making these big heads. Are you just saying I, that in one of the new editions, it would have been really cool. Like even the billboards on the edition, if they would have had each billboard a single direction. Yes. And then oh, someone to pick totally. up on that. That would have been the ticket. Oh, yeah, that would have been cool. I yeah. get billboards I in there, like for yeah, Contra, like yeah, just somebody to more figure creativity it out. In, in revealing yeah. it, right? Like that they would have been on the amazing. sticker of the thing, so. Right. Yeah. I do have to say, it's now that we've got the big heads, the little heads look like munchkin heads, right? Like, <laughs> <Yeah>. I, went, <laughs> I went big head to little head on my stream yesterday, and I'm like, did the body stay big? This guy looks like a shrunken head guy, yeah. like from from like a voodoo it, doll or something. It reminds like, me of uh, the me, one of the Men in Black movies where he's got this miniature little yeah, head, big body. Like, yeah, you yeah, honestly but... should shake <laughs> while you ride. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Once you get used to the bobblehead, though, like the normal head looks too small. It, it looks wrong. And yeah. it, it, I, I've I've been riding with it, and it's cool. But it does it does block the vision a little bit. Like if you see the guy's head over top of yours, he's already getting away from you. So um, yeah, but it's not bad. It's not bad. <laughs> While we're talking about Zwift, uh, we'll talk about race score and the ZRL, and then we'll move to Bike Terra. We have to talk about Bike Terra. But uh, so, Fez, if you're still here, me and you did that race oh. with different categories. I'm at like 622 race score, and I noticed you were in a group. You finished 20 minutes behind doing zone one, zone two, whichever. You were 20 minutes after the leaders, finished fourth, and he finished and gained points. How did you All gain right. points? How did you gain points? I don't understand. Like, that makes no sense. Like, you were dead last. You'd lost 25 points. Ah, okay. So this was not updated when I took it. Understood. Okay. All right now, here's the other fact. If we could pull the other picture up, this is what I don't understand about race score. And, the, and I, I'm a big fan of race score. I, it might be good, but this is what I don't understand. If you pull up... Fez and mine data, we are darn near identical with our numbers, not the, like the watts per kilogram. And wait till you see his his uh, race score. This then this is what I don't understand. More than you, yeah. How how have I done? I've done like fifteen ish or more in that area race score events, and Fez has done one. So all of his seed score is based off of riding and we are very similar watts per kilogram and or you know at all the numbers and he's a hundred 120 points higher than me i don't understand like this kicks this, your this, ass this, this makes no sense right, how, how about running can you guys hear me yeah. Yeah. yeah all right i had to put the charger in but i'm on a new mic but how many weeks have we spent trying to figure this out this 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 is what doesn't make sense to me this because this has got to be week six. I and, and it's so in Fez's. Why is Fez seven or one hundred and twenty points ahead of me? Like it it doesn't make any sense at all. <laughs> the only thing I, I can I figure out it. is Fez has maybe Fez has a ten minute number that we don't see on Swift Power or that he didn't uh, do possible. in a race that's really big. Um, Fez is Fez is a very good sprinter. And so he doesn't, I don't, Fez can speak for himself, but I remember I've watched him a lot. He's, he's very, he's very crafty. He's like Casey. He's very yeah. crafty. Like when he does a race, he's like, I know how to sit in, I know how to sit in and boom, he sprints. And it's like really he's good got, sprint. 
Yeah, he, and he's got a big 15 second number. And if he can extend that out to 30, because it's yeah, it's CP 30 and CP 600, right? Mm -hmm. That feeds yeah. the so the 30 second sprint could definitely. And I've heard people like, you know, 20, 30 watts in that 30 second number will bump your seed score a lot. So this is another thing is I set, I bumped my 10 minute power from 340 to 370. My race score did not change. My seed score did not change. I increased it roughly 30 watts, may not be exact, but roughly 30 watts, not a change. Have I set we... a 30 second, not a change. I don't, th that's what I understand. If, so... if you're saying one thing, and then like I do those, both of those, I set both 30 and 10 minute things and my race score doesn't change. And, and I'm still perplexed over losing 80 points. Now, if I still had my 80 points, it was sitting right around, you know, the upper 600s, I wouldn't think much about it. But so that's- I can't, I can't remember if view. we've asked this or if we've ever figured it out. Like when you say no change, how fast is the, is the change? How is that? Is there documentation from Zwift about the the scoring updating and going up and down? We know we we know it's in the writer list, but it's it's re, is it reflected anywhere? So you're just getting no change, like there's no point change at all. You don't get any notification outside of that first little screenshot that from Fez from like a week now, ago or two weeks ago. It was we, a couple days ago. It's the arrow up and the underline yeah. and then the arrow down underline. Yeah. That's. That's the only one where, and they don't tell you how many you go up and down. So you're having to mm -hmm. chase what your number was before, and then you get the arrow, and then you have to chase whatever. And there's no documentation, right? For unless we've already answered this question, I think we still yes. have an unanswered question of like, when does it update? From what so, we're seeing, just based yeah. on what we're witnessing, it, there's an immediate change after a race based on your results, but that's highly inaccurate for what the overnight change ends up being after a race. Now, I kind of wish they just get away from the immediate change, right? Yeah, you, you can give me you can give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down immediately after a race, but don't even try to speculate what it's going to be if it's yeah. going to be that bad. Because it's like like you were showing there, Brian. I'm sure that's what happened. Is Fez showed yeah. that he gained he gained points the day on the day, right? But overnight it dropped 25. And I had a similar experience where it's like I dropped two points in a race and I logged in the next day and I was 14 points less or something yeah. like that. And, and uh, what could have been because I think I was a couple hours later, so it wasn't the overnight reset. So that's where when I looked at it. Yeah, this this was like three hours after that race. And he's a 728 right now. Yeah, Fez's. so it was, I didn't wait long enough for that reset. So that was me so there, getting fancy. I, I, I'm thinking yeah. of an idea. I'm, pit, I'm pitching an idea to Zwift, which is to you guys, because Zwift is never going to hear this. <laughs> Should we not have a, like, like, like tennis scoring and golfer, like number ranked golfer where, where there's a score, but it's not your actual number of who you are. It's like the number one ranked writer is whatever, how many points is that being used or is that even in Zwift race or does it racing Zwift racing dot app or whatever that other thing is? Is that like the, where it's like, Hey, you may have gone up two or three points, but you didn't change your rank score. Does that make sense? I think I understand what you're saying. Like you're rank, you're ranked 15. You win, yeah. you go up 45 points, you lose, you go down 35 points, but you're yeah. still ranked 15 because you didn't, you didn't bump the sick, the, the 13th rider or the 14th rider yeah yeah swift has that and it's it's showing on the screen a little bit i think maybe now if if it's still oh, up okay there. i guess it, it was up there um but yeah like swift has a uh, or swift power has a race ranking and then it's it, it's a number and then it's what placing you are based on that ranking so your ranking can change without your placement or your placement can change without your ranking changing if other people move around you but that's swift power that's yes. not Zwift racing score. That's, right, right. If you if you pull uh, up Zwift power right now. <laughs> yeah, if I know that if, I'm if, asking, pitching it for racing, this Zwift racing score. Right. I know it's in Zwift power, but isn't Zwift power sort of on its last legs? Well, that's what I'm kind of laughing at. You if you pull think. up Zwift power like, right now on. On, your, uh, on your profile page, there's there's three different points on your profile page. There's race ranking, there's Z points, and there's Zwift racing score. 
It's like, uh, you know, and I was just, <laughs> I, I was just frustrated with this today because I was riding the pretzel ride and I'm like, is... Zwift is big enough now. When you roll something out, <laughs> it should be available on all platforms. This and is, I'm riding a, this is... I'm riding a pretzel race and there's no, there's no profile to the pretzel on Zwift power. And I'm like, this is a Zwift owned website. It should have the profile for all the routes before it rolls out, right? Like that should be part of your implementation is I'm implementing a new route. All my websites should have the new route. Everything should go at once. Like, um, so, so. I'm going, I go back to the old American football. So a lot of American collegiate football. So for the international audience, we, we used to have a ranking system oh. that was the coaches <laughs> poll. Yeah, and the Maybe. and the and the press poll, like the 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 writers of of college. So there was two polls, and so there was like, oh, you're the number one ranked t team, and you're like not in the not, and you're like number two in another poll. That's what we have with Zwift now. It's like it's it's the wild west. Yeah. I'm like, you don't really know what you are. So like, oh, I guess we just race. <laughs> oh, I got a good workout. That's what it comes down to. It's I get to mm -hmm. race with people, and it's a good workout. Yeah, and the seriousness have... is just not as serious. Zwift ranking. Yeah, you both shake your head. I don't know what Lee is. I can't see Lee and I can't hear him, but I'm assuming he's, he's not even yeah, said yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm talking over him. I apologize. Go. Yeah, so we have race ranking, pace group, Zwift racing score, and Z points. Four different ways of being categorized in Zwift right now. Yeah, Zwift and that power pace needs group. to go. Yeah, yeah. I think it, the pace group is very misleading too like i i think it should be if we're still going to use that it should be race group because it's like the pace partners is that pace group is what i think of you know i think you know race, you were the one that said that so doing. when swift rolls yeah. out the race score when swift rolls out the race score in what 30 days in, in the next 30 days 40 days whatever right they're saying october so yeah. right they got they got 40 days to hit an october time frame all of this needs to go away, right? This yeah. all need. This is the big issue right now. Is they have an identity crisis or bipolar disorder or something going on with categories and what's what? And <laughs> you know, it, it's a segue into what you mentioned, Brian White, on on ZRLs. I got this mess going on yeah. with it too. Like ZRL, just get mess. just get rid of it all. If you perform well, you move up. If you perform poorly, you move down. That's it. Like, yeah. just. Yeah. yeah, yeah what, what, is Kiss, what does KISS stand for? Keep, Keep simple, it simple, stupid. stupid. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't mean, know <laughs> if it was one of you guys' stream or someone else's stream, but they were talking about, like, the relegation system in the European League. The top third... You know, we'll move up. Mm -hmm. The bottom third will move I down mean, I, like that. Was, okay, yeah. So I think that is a good thing because right now just getting one or two teams moving well, isn't enough. That's, that's what I say they should do. That's not what they're doing. That's what I I'm know. saying is they got to quit reseeding us. That? No, they're no that they, because I was stuck in this when I was doing Team X way back in the day. We would yeah. always finish ninth or tenth out of thirteen, and we would never move down. And it's like. Oh, they would do, but there was the there was the the promoted up, right? There but they were that, only they, they were only promoting and moving like one or two teams out of each group. So yeah. these people were for, and this is where I think the the race score should fix some of this. But this is where ZRL needs to get this in. They need rather than trying to reseed people after a race or two or whatever. At the end of each round, they need to more aggressively move more people. So a team like ours is if we would have stayed division two, we would have been on the podium. We may not have won, but we probably would have been a podium or a fourth place team, right? Mm -hmm. We move up next round. We got last place this week, right? We're going to get slaughtered in division one, but next round we would have moved up to division one. We would have got absolutely smoked, finished ninth, 10th in the division, and we would have moved down, right? But every other round in theory, if you kept that rotation going, we would have a successful season. Yeah. The problem is right now is there is there is 80% of the teams that never move that are never successful, right? They're forever 
And it's, it's not that you should be competitive in every race that you're in. This is the same for individual and ZRL needs to get this for teams. It's not that you should be competitive in every race that you're in, but ev there should be enough fluidity and movement within the leagues, within the groups, whatever, that over time, everyone should have an opportunity to be at the top and the bottom, wherever they're at. They should be moving enough that everyone has that opportunity, right? Mm -hmm. But 50% of the teams are going to be below 50%, right? Every season. <laughs> and But they shouldn't always be there. And that's the problem. That's the problem with BCAT right now. And that's the problem with ZRL is there are these teams that are stuck in forever mediocre. And it, they can fix that. And I think they tried to fix – I think they keep trying to put Band-Aids on a thing rather than just trying to get to the root of it. So – Forever, and that kind of leads to my ZRL rant. Sounds like a right? great podcast. <laughs> I, it, it is like you're forever media. I, I am so frustrated <laughs> this week with the whole ZRL thing because I mean, yeah. my teammates went in there and they worked so hard, and we got our teeth kicked in. We finished yeah. last, absolutely last. <laughs> um, we don't have a single person on our team that has a 20 minute power over 3.9. We are not going to keep up with Arrow Potato and those those guys got their teeth kicked in, right? The guys that I saw in that race that were really strong still yeah. finished 30th, right? My teammates are 3.5 watt per kilo guys that have big sprints. They're they're done in that race. They, there was no hope. They were spit out the second sprint. I watched one of the replays of that from your division, and I legit don't know how I would have done being right. the obvious a in at, at that point being in b cat like that was serious stuff and, and the guys, guys that i race and then get beat by they were dropped you know like right. just like the guys you said so there there were names in that race you know arrow potato uh, uh boyko yeah. uh Seamus, a side right he was one i think brian that you've raced a lot right mm -hmm. those guys got spit out right they finished 25th to 35th right they were a minute and a half off the back at the finish line um and that's where i think the categories need to go away too right if you're division one b and you finish top five guess what you're yeah. division three a next round right like because I, I i promise you that those top four teams in our race this week would have won division three a oh yeah division B1 is the <laughs> ultimate sandbagger division. It's a mess. Like, really? And hopefully they hopefully they solve it. You said they have, they have they have 40 days or whatever it is because they got they yeah. got it'll be it'll be Halloween. That they'll, they'll, they'll be, release it on Halloween. <laughs> and let's be crystal clear. What Lee just said is 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 we're like division one B is is ultimate sandbagger, right? Like that's that's what he said, BK. But basically Okay, yeah. What yeah, what it comes down to is um I, it's not a people problem, right? Like we say that, we say that, we use that sandbagger term. Guys, this is not an issue with the top B riders. This is an issue yeah. with the category system, right? Yes. Like I don't I don't hold the individuals at the top of the B1 category at fault for this. This is this is a category problem. This is not a people problem. This is not a racer problem. They're they're doing what they have to do to be competitive. Unlike Brian White, some people don't go out there and just slaughter a race because they can. They do everything they can to hold back, to just nip it at the line because yeah. they know if they bump up, they're getting their butts kicked. And so. the funny thing is, the effort that I did, if you think, if, you know, if you look at Zwift Power, that guy wasn't there. He was just Aunt Bev. And it made sense. He was on the basic bike, in the basic kit. Like when you look, I looked at watch the replay, I'm like, oh, yeah, he's, he, he's flat out beginner. And yeah, he wasn't registered on Zwift Power. So I was racing, you know, a ghost essentially. But that's the point. I wasn't going to lose. And yeah, it, it, and it, that that was the fun part. You know, it's like, it's not like I was, oh, shoot, I got this. You know, just like, oh, holy shit. Like, look at this. I was, I was kind of surprised and excited. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Go for it, BK. I'm raising my hand so I don't talk over Lee. <laughs> go for it. Can I go? Yep. All right. Did we talk about Brian and my whoosh? We oh, haven't. We did. All right. Let's do it. Because we have we have uh, we're an hour in. 
we're going to get to bike Terra. Don't Tara. worry about the bike Terra people. We're going to get it in. Brian, Brian White's got some fantastic news. Go for it, Brian. Yeah. So over my shoulder here, we got, uh, <laughs> we got coming Ow. down. I can't quite see how clear it is, but I I'm guessing it's coming up to into the final climb. Uh, today, Sunday race club was in the Wollongong city, which was apparently a UCI road race a while ago. And it is an absolute, you got two walls of a climb. Uh, so this is the third week in a row I have went off the front and tried to do my thing. That's my power. That's what suits me. I'm not a massive VO2 guy. It's improving, but there are two guys with me here, and one is working. One was kind of hanging out, said he was tired, whatever. Uh, and we went off, and I ended up taking the victory again. So I've now I have to pass the you know the verification but power meter was connected heart heart rate was brand new one i eliminated that issue so as of right now unless something wild comes out of this verification i have won the sunday race club and i'm stoked because i never dreamed i would and this is another problem i'm racing just like in that race on monday when i upgraded to a i race these races i'm not sitting back in this area of the thing chilling and i looked obviously i like we're doing effort here to stay off the front i own only one hold, climb. hold on hold on yeah <laughs> you're not hanging back in the pack because no. you don't feel that that's a strong strategy but you know you can right and you're just like i'm going to do this like have you yeah so i know that i can sit back there but i know my what i feel is my best chance to win is going off the front and trying this because no one chases no one no yeah. one comes along one guy had we had like nine seconds and he bridged the gap i'm like all right because at this point i'm like do i stop do i go i can't do this by myself he already told me he wasn't working he gave me the dead battery emote and i'm like hmm so once i saw this other guy coming i'm like all right he's going to get here i'm going to see what happens because i was in chat debating about going back what uh, I just find interesting about this is we talked about it a little bit earlier in the week, Brian, like you, you didn't go into this, like thinking I'm going off the front. Cause you're like, I'm a marked man. Now I've went off two yeah. weeks in a row and I'm struggling with the, the short term hill power. So like, you're not doing these big efforts with the intention of going off the front. It's more like you're riding the way you ride and you're taking your momentum off the climb. And all of a sudden you're like, they got that was if anybody's watched me ttt before it's right like you don't yeah. rest until you accelerate you're accelerating so, at the top of these hills and they're just that, letting you go that's exactly what happened here the first climb i'm i held four six over the top because it's a, it, it's a little flat then drops you know has a dip and then kicks down i all i did was hold four six over which is what i did basically about the whole climb with and it's like two, three seconds. Another guy gets to me. I'm like, okay, now I know this guy has a big FTP. So I'm like, we're going to move. Uh, and then it, it, at the bottom of the hill, we had nine seconds. The other guy came across and the rest is history. We finished a minute and 10 seconds a, ahead of, it would have been whatever, third place. So you didn't, you didn't go in thinking I'm going to go off the front. You're no, like, hey, I, I'm going to play it by ear. Yep. And then, but you have that tendency to do that. That's not what the strategy was, but you have the tendency to do that. You yeah. just raced on the feel of what the matchup was between you, the other riders, and the course, right? Yeah, so this course, I mean, it's very punchy. Like, there was, like, four different sections besides the climb that were punchy. So my, my anticipation was these guys are going ham, and I'm just going to hang on and see what happens. And I got over the – and they literally set up. They were going 2.3 watts per kilogram, and I'm like, dude – I don't understand. And, and that's the thing. It's like the mentality is I'm going to sit back. And I, it, and I don't know if it's the old dynamics within my whoosh, like no one's adapted yet. Whereas I'm really digging into this kind of as they've changed. And my whole way of riding is I'm going to attack and try to break away because that's what I feel is my best way to go. And I don't know how these guys don't try. At the end of the race, I'm not like 4.4 watts per kilogram. They can't. No, I looked like you were 3.8. 
at the mm -hmm. end. Um, it, yeah. So do you feel like they're, uh, have you looked enough to tell, are they upgrading people? Uh, I, I'm looking at it and I'm noticing like in the chase group today, one of the names I see, and it's just because I know him pretty well, Jeff Rooney was actually in that chase bunch. Yeah. Like trying to come across, right? We're, but the few weeks in the past, Jeff's been pretty well hammered out the back of the group when you guys mm -hmm. make it super tough. So I'm like, it, are they upgrading guys? They're not upgrading you, even though you're doing well, but you're not breaking out these big power numbers. You're just yeah. going steady and they're letting you go. So I, I, the first race that I won on the, the on the 30 K breakaway, uh, I finished seven race. seconds. Yeah. yeah. The annulment race, <laughs> the, I finished seven seconds in front of second place. But at that moment, I didn't realize he had gained over 30 seconds on the group. So that guy yeah. got to the end, did seven watts per kilogram on the final climb, and then put, so I would have been whatever it was, what would that have been, 45 seconds in front of third place? And he gained that much time, 38 seconds to on me and that final climb those are the guys they are, are uh, upgrading so if you come to the end of the race and you have a massive you know you're hitting your best power like you're hitting five watts per kilogram on that climb like i did 4.3 and some of these guys did more to me on the final climb so that's what i'm saying is like they're afraid i feel they're afraid it's like you know of doing that because it is a money race so they want to be in the best position but I don't care. Like if I, if I, like last week when I died and I finished seventh, I did what I thought was the best move for me. And then the guy who I was with dropped out, which was kind of BS because I did a lot of work holding his wheel and then uh, whatever, but that's how it goes. You know what I mean? I tried doing what I felt was best. I would have never been able to uh, climb with those guys. Those guys did over five Watts per kilogram on all three of those final climbs last week. I cannot repeat that for three to five minutes, like back to back to back like that. So, what, so whatever is I, I don't different, know what it is. Whatever is different now versus when I was watching you do this six, eight, ten weeks ago, I feel like something's different um, because I watching the first few weeks of it, I didn't feel like a, and I, I hate to even use these terms, right? But I. I, I didn't feel like a high B cat Swift rider had a chance, even had yeah. a shot, right? And it, yes, you're an A cat now, but you look at the numbers at the end of this race. The, these are standard B cat numbers. You're holding 3.8. You're hitting that hill pretty hard, but you're not doing six, seven, eight watts per yeah. kilo for the whole hill, anything like that, right? You're, you're doing pretty standard time trial style efforts that average 3.8. That's, that's B cat work. Yeah, and and that's I looked at Cat Three today. Now there's a guy in Cat Three that I don't know why he's in Cat Three because he just demolishes the field every week, and he wasn't Cat Four. When I my first couple of Zwift race or Sunday race clubs on my whoosh, he was in Cat Four. I have no idea how that happened. Now he's in Cat Three demolishing them. So the restructuring of how they're doing moving guys, I think, has changed Cat Four because. Whenever in July, I was very competitive on Zwift as a B. And I was even even hanging in some of these mass start races with the A's. But I would get absolutely destroyed on these climbs. Like any effort, mm -hmm. boom, they're, I'm gone. I, I didn't stand a chance. So I think some of those guys that were instigating it have moved up. They have moved them up. And... So you feel the competition is becoming more streamlined for like I'm where I'm supposed to be to be yeah. competitive, or do you feel like, mm -hmm. Hey, there can be some more fine tuning. So if you just look at my race and what I did, every single one of these guys, if they would have just even chased me a little bit, they probably would have beat me in that final climb. Now, granted, I may not have done some more as much work. I may have been a little more fresh, but just as mm -hmm. pure uh, the efforts on the climbs because you can sort through them on the my Woosh results they were all higher yeah. than me so th this this area here is where i'm so it came down to race tactics time. you're saying it came yeah. down it wasn't it wasn't so much blowing them away or some other thing it's just like hey tactically this worked out this yeah. way if Which i'm in this want. race we want pure racing to be that way 
Yeah, if I'm in this race, I'm Ola Warren, right? If Brian's ridden away from me the last two weeks, yeah. I'm chasing his move and I'm not helping him a bit. Right? And that's exactly it, where he's going. As, as long as you're holding yeah. me away, and I know that's aggravating for you, but I'm like, yes, that's what I do yeah. here, right? I know yeah, I can't you got let him, him go. Second. Yeah. And when, if it comes down to what it was last week, right, where they started reeling you in, he sat on your wheel and you've got something left, then I go, right? Yeah. But as long as we're keeping a gap and I'm not working, sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm not doing any work. And, but aren't and, you and, risking? Aren't you risking them coming back? And then, are you confident in your sprint? Like, wouldn't you want to work with them to go? Hey, well, we might go one two it, to stay if away. If they started pushing, if it, if if it started to become in jeopardy, I would yeah. I would have helped. Oh, you would but, work. But okay. they weren't. So you're an they weren't no, pulling they the weren't. gap back. So well, you can see right I, here. Right. I, I, I'm. Would, yeah. And I probably would have in this like him. Like I I'd have been happy with second. <laughs> right. So it's, so right here the blue guys. <laughs> The cat three guys caught, you know, us. And I'm like, and I'm not doing the math in my head. Like I'm exhausted. I'm out of it. Like I, I am, my legs are on fire. Deck. I'm still struggling to walk is how tired my legs are. I'm like, oh my God, they are going to bring it. We got like a minute and 30 seconds. I think like cat three is bringing us back. Like I'm done. I'm not I like all this. goddamn. Like I'm just like going through all this. And in chat, I'm saying this. I was like, we're screwed. I said, they got us. I didn't really, I'm not realizing there's like the climbs 2k, you know, we're we're a kilometer You're, from the base of it. You know what I mean? Like I'm panicking. Half up with 4K to go. Yeah, right. Like, like at this yeah, moment, I'm panicking, and, and I just just for me being exhausted. And uh, but I'll but yeah. last was it last week though or the week before? Yeah, that one guy that ended up getting promoted. He closed the gap like that. Like oh, he, yeah. you went into yeah. that final climb with a couple of K left, and I thought you were home free. It was 50 seconds. And all of a sudden, with a half a kilometer to go, I'm like, you, you're in trouble. Like, yeah. he was common. Yeah. And, and last week, the coming into those climbs, those last three climbs, I was a minute or so ahead or whatever it was. I lost 30 seconds on the first one. I lost 20 on the next, roughly. And then halfway or a quarter way up the other one, they passed me, and that was it. And I, I mean, I tried fighting it, and there was nothing. And, and, th and this is something that I did that I wish I wouldn't have done. Looking back at the, the replay, a guy in front of me got annulled. If I would have sprinted and I could have got to sixth place, I would have snuck in to, through annulment to fifth place. So that was my situa uh, situational awareness sucking. But I was completely dead last week. Last week, I was fried, like totally fried. And uh, well, congratulations. I'm yeah, going to, I'm going to say this. I was starting to type it, but I want to point this out because hard claws calls it out and yeah. it's, it's a great observation um, in chat. And he, 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 he's being kind of critical of my roosh, but they're not doing themselves a favor. If this is basically, Wait, are we it. taking, are we taking hard claws comments now? Well, uh, it, 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 this is a good point and I want to call this out and I was starting to type it in chat that they split, they're splitting into four categories based on who's registered and who's done the power profile test and who's registered for that week. So if, if next week, 10 B cat riders sign up, just 10 B cat riders and Brian white, Brian white will be cat one because they split each week based on who's registered for that week. And if you go into the female races, they're going down way deep cat four in a female race you're going to have winners down in like the two low three watt per kilo averages that the the female races are going much deeper into what we would say swift categories for how they're doing yeah. the categories mm -hmm. because there's so if you want my whoosh to go deeper you need to go to all your your c cat buddies and beg them to do the power profile test and get involved because if you get what there's a hundred hundred or so guys signing up every week. If you can go get 30 cat C riders to sign up all of a sudden division four is going to be cat C type riders, right? Yeah. Brian White's going to move up because they're I'll distributing them. Yeah. I'll allow it from hard claws. I'll allow it. So that was, that I, was I valid think, enough. Yeah. I don't think that's a, my whoosh issue. I think that's, that's, that's about <laughs> us as riders getting more people involved yeah. in legitimate racing yes. deeper down into the, and, into the system. And on the last My Woosh podcast thing, they are in October starting a open, no registration, no verification Sunday race club. So anyone can show up and race uh, on that. And they're also, I, I, I they're going to have to get to people. Like Casey said, they might open up a fifth category 
or maybe separate some of these more. So as of right now, I think that if they get more numbers, they will open those categories some more. Uh, go ahead, Kellison. I don't want to cut off Lee. If Lee wants to get no, is Lee fine. chiming in here? No, you're good. Okay. Uh, I got a hard I got a hard uh, six thirty out, uh, but we want to get by Terra. Do we want to? We're we're good with my whoosh. I want to get my one one last Terra thing in. with my whoosh. One last thing. So okay, you, go. Go. You remember the little video with the Yates twins? You remember that video yes. I had playing behind me? I figured out who it is. Out of all the people within playing. the world, who do you think that uh, av these avatars are modeled after? It's not a professional. Well, of all the people? Yeah, it's not a current professional cyclist like I was expecting to be Adam Yates. And not Pogachar. Alberta Contador. Nope. Matt Smithson. This is was it a his, former cyclist? Oh. This <laughs> is him. This is his body. This is how oh, he's. Is I, I read the bike. This it was uh, oh, okay. taped during the championship of whatever last summer. Because I, I said, "Hey, I said I made this video. I thought it was hilarious because because we were because he was with this break with me. So I said, "Hey, man, great work, whatever." So we chatted a little while, and I said, "I got a funny thing I made about the animations because they are addressing it in the next update. It, they are tackling that." And uh, I said, "He's like that is hilarious because I know who that is," and it, it was him. So that that, that we can. We can always blame exclusive. him. Exclusive. We have an exclusive. Yeah. Breaking news. My wish exclusive. Yeah. Perfect. All right. Bike Terra. We did. On the we, Bike Terra. We uh, touched on. Yeah, yeah. I think we were going to talk about it. We didn't talk about it. It was the first group ride on Bike Terra. I was a part of it. Uh, Aku uh, or Felty. Felty was on it. Uh, and Bjorn, friend of the show, was there. And there were some other people. Uh, it was very cool. It was like first one where you could ride with people. The uh, developer put it together, Mike uh, and Anslo. They were kind of they were getting real time feedback of like, hey, this is we want to do this and we want to do that and and like you know like the uh, what it was it the I was saying that it's kind of nice to not have visual indicators and you can ride just based on uh, like instead of having like a, a red for the wattage you're going too hard or or you're going hard enough so it's an attack or whatever in the rider list you know flashing watts per kilo and too much it was it's just distance so i liked how subtle it was and it was nice to kind of like have that community feel in a new platform that's it that's the bike terra talk anyone else there's workouts and they're getting better uh what they're constantly developing that's the other thing is they're constantly developing and getting uh, they're looking at uh, stronger uh, GPX files with proper buildings, I believe. And the physics are still be and they're constantly working on the physics. So uh, bike Terra is, is coming together. I like it. Try it. That's it's definitely it. good to see a lot of these. Everyone done. Everyone's programs. doing their homework because everyone's typing right now. Everyone's typing. <laughs> yeah. Got a big project, <laughs> but yeah, uh, I was talking to uh, Hard Claws here. We were we were talking about the cats and stuff. All right. Well, then let's field some calls. Let's field uh, calls. Let's 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 go to the phones. Let's go to the phones. Go to the phones. Anybody have anything? Are they chiming in with some good? Uh, we were talking uh, about some, the race categories. Reckless, stuff. Any reckless speculation for the week? So. What, yeah, what's coming up this week? Wait, I, I I had a hard time finding it. Indy Velo's got a tour starting oh. like Wednesday yeah. through Sunday. They got a tour okay. going. I was kind of interested in it, and I found some random weird Google Doc with rules and teams, and I don't know if I'm, I, I, I can I just sign up and ride? can I just go ride it, or do I need a team or anybody? <laughs> like I, I think you go they're to hurting Indy themselves. I searched. Google and I found a Reddit post that got me to a Google Doc. Okay. I think so, I know what it is. It's like uh the Toma from he's an old, old RGT guy. He streams as well. I think he was putting together a stage race. It's like a big yeah, stage I mean, it race was, thing. So it, it it was when I looked at it, I, I was expecting like bigger, harder races like the chasing stuff, right? That were gonna be longer, but it looked like every day, Wednesday through Sunday, was a twenty-five to thirty kilometer event of some sort. Um 
I mean, I might, I might take a stab at it just as something fun to do, but it looked like it was team based also. Um, so I'll have to if look anybody knows in the audience, put it in the discord so we can help Casey find it. Yeah. And then we're going to, I just thought it, it was, so you know, it's like, it was one of those things where I was like, Oh, this would be a fun thing for me to get a hard four or five days of workout. in. it's not like the chasing yeah. thing where it's all year long. It was like, Oh, Wednesday through Sunday, I can commit to writing every day. It looks um, like, but I, I, I have find a schedule on or... their Facebook page or discord. Yeah. It, that's, okay. that's the tough discord thing. Is about, under it's, races. Very, it's very independent. Oh. Indie Velo has yeah. community stuff. It's hard to find. Under show discussion, oh, Rocket Man, uh, I post the link. I will okay. repost it down at the bottom. Okay. I'll repost it underneath where I posted that podcast, and I'll post it in chat for Appreciate anyone. it, Rocket Bye. Man. Thank you, Rocket Man. All right, six twenty. Oh. We want to play the music. Shit. Lee got any more? I don't want to talk over Lee. I'll just post in the Indie Velo Grand Tour five day race Wednesday, September twenty fifth to Sunday. September 29th. Yeah, I was trying to go in here and look to see if there was like multiple events a day for East Coast, West Coast, you know, Europe, that kind of thing. And I couldn't really find anything. I need to go into Indivelo and see what I can find. At first, I was, I, I almost immediately closed it because the first thing was a prologue, individual time trial. I'm like, oh, the first day is a time trial. And I'm like, it's a 2.7 mile time trial. I'm not doing this stupid crap. And I was almost <laughs> about seven? done. But it's it's actually stage one and stage two are both on Wednesday. So it's you do the 2.7 individual oh, okay, time yeah, yeah. trial and then you go into an 18 mile or a 30 kilometer race. Like I'm assuming going to be within so a few minutes, right? Yeah, you have it now. You have the link now, yeah. I, I have the info, yeah. At, at Lee found the info and shared Perfect. it too. Um, I, what I can't find is like, it, I got to dig a little deeper. It's like, can you race without a team? Is there, you know, looks like oh, basically, right. basically a bunch of people are going to win water bottles. That's what I can get out of this. Everybody's going to get a water bottle. <laughs> water but it is, too. okay. But it is, it is hardware restricted, right? Performance verification tier yeah. one, properly calibrated smart trainers, tier mandatory one, yeah. heart rate monitors. Um, you must use your power from your primary, from your, from your smart trainer. Um, yeah, so it's got the Indie Velo stuff in there, which is cool. Um, but yeah, it looks like team points. Uh, basically, all the events are team points of some sort. Um, but every day is, like I said, that 25-ish kilometers, um, it looks like. Okay. Uh, but it might be a fun if anybody's looking for something to try out Indie Velo. You're going to get people um, in there. And it's it's Monday or like Wednesday through Sunday. So yeah. Um, it might be good. Very cool. Uh, and right. also, if anyone is doing, well, I'll, I'll keep saying this because Indie Velo, use Bluetooth, not Amp Plus. If you're going to do yeah. any of this verified stuff anywhere, it, Indie Velo, MyWoosh, Zwift, wherever you're doing it, use the Bluetooth. Don't use Amp Plus for any verified racing. Uh, Bluetooth is the protocol. Is Amp, Amp, Plus is, Amp Plus is on its way out, right? Is that yeah, what we have Amp to Plus, say for verification? Like Amp Plus is just yeah. not used. Like just don't use it. Right. So don't use Amp Plus. Public service. Yeah. Because uh, you you can possibly get DQ'd in Indie Velo. They may have toned it down a little bit, but it's it'll open that door up if you're using Amp Plus for these verified, the, the dual recording required events and all that. Uh, and just even probably the regular, if the power meter or the, Amp plus data is not broadcasting correctly. I will. Right on. It, I, I, gotta go. I had this. <laughs> no, BK's got to go. Keep All going. Right. Go, Casey. We'll, we'll wrap it. No, go, I, no, no, no. Go ahead, Casey. You I was just scrolling down, and they do have they do have time slots uh, listed further down in that Google Doc where okay. they're, they've got time slots listed, and they, they actually have a lot of time availability. Like every few hours, they have a time slot to do this. So... Um, I got. I don't know if you got to register or what do you got to do, but it looks like every two hours through the day there is there's a time slot to do this, so you should have plenty oh. of opportunity. Speaking of every two hours, my Woosh is doing this this thing over the next week or so about the Zurich stuff. There's a time trial, road race, and something else. So it's on the public oh, it's calendar. Like, yeah, it, World Championship Week. Ch World yeah. Championship so, week. Yeah. So if you're interested in checking out my Woosh. They have some really cool races and you should be able to find humans there. Like hopefully you can find some humans, but there are several events today. 
I forgot to mention that earlier. All right. You ready? Lee, you done? Music's going, it sounds like. Got nothing else to add. Music, music's going. Play the music. Thanks, everyone, for hanging hey, out. See you guys. Reckless speculation, public service announcements. Appreciate it. Take care, everybody. Bye. Bye, guys.